In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful. Today is the birth anniversary of the greatest lady of all times. And the great lady of Islam and humanity. Fatima Zahra, peace be upon her. Therefore, I would like to extend my heartiest congratulations to all of you men and women believers. And also all Muslims all over the world. On the occasion of this blessed birthday, I hope that by the blessings of this great lady, Allah Almighty, for the sake of Lady Fatima Zahra, would bless us with the opportunity of his obedience and also living his disobedience. I also hope that Fatima Zahra's great descendant, Imam Mahdi, may Allah hasten his reappearance and peace be upon him would bless us all. And Lady Fatima Masuma, peace be upon her, whom we have the honor of living by her side, would intercede for everyone. There is a verse in Holy Quran which is as follows. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, and for that the aspires aspire. <coughs> Those who would like to compete must compete with each other in doing good deeds and try to win over each other in so doing. This verse is an imperative sentence. And orders everyone to aspire and compete. You ladies and gentlemen, are the scholars and students in the Islamic Seminary School from the great continent of Africa. All of you have gathered here with your families for education and learning. The knowledge of Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them. And then go back to your own countries and cities. And teach other people this knowledge. I would like to point out two issues here. The first issue regards your learning of this knowledge and the other regards your transmitting it to other people.
With regard to the first issue, there is nothing in this world among good deeds, prayers, and all the other things that helps mankind approximate to Allah Almighty. Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them. The Holy Prophet and the Infallible. And acquire Imam Mahdi is satisfactory. There is nothing in this world more helpful than acquiring knowledge. According to the narration references, with regard to the money given to a person by another person, the Prophet has stated the following. If you give someone some money, Allah will give it back to you tenfold. Either in this world, or Allah will reward you tenfold in hereafter. If the person whom you helped and gave some money to, was sick, then Allah would reward you seventy times more. If the person you helped was among your close relatives, then Allah would reward you seven hundred times more. And the Prophet went on with instances where Allah would reward one seven thousand times more. And even Allah would reward one seventy thousand times more. Then the Prophet concluded with saying that if one helped a scholar and paid him some money, then Allah would reward him one hundred thousand times more. And then Prophet did not go anymore. This means that when there are some people who need money and you have some money that you want to give someone for the sake of Allah, then depending on who this money is given, whether from your relatives, parents, sick people, or scholars if you give the money to scholars, Allah will reward you 100,000 times more. But if you give the money to others, Allah will reward you less than 100,000 times. And they will differ from 10 times more to 7,000 times more. That is to say, if you have a neighbor who is a scholar, and you give your money to your parents, it will be rewarded less. And if you give it to the neighbor, it will be rewarded more. Between a sick person and a scholar, it will be rewarded more if you give it to the scholar. If there is a paralyzed person and a scholar, it will be rewarded more if you give it to the scholar. And this shows the value of students and scholars. You as a students of Islamic seminary schools who learn the knowledge of Ahlul Bayt, you are most valued by Allah according to the words of the greatest of His creations, the Prophet of Islam. You must value the fill you joined. 
and you will never find any other field more valuable than this. This is the ayahs and the grandest status before Allah. And it does not matter which level you are studying at. Whether elementary levels or advanced ones, the fact that you are acquiring the knowledge of Ahl al-Bayt is most valuable. Moreover, when you study different fields in the religious studies, from Quranic sciences, basic principles of faith, religious decrees, ethics and religious practices, to the history of the Prophets, and the history of the Prophet of Islam and Ahl al-Bayt, it is all considered to be grand status and rank for you. According to the narration, when someone is acquiring knowledge, even the doves flying in the sky, pray to Allah for forgiveness of his sins and hiding his mistakes. The roaming lion in the plains, sheep grazing in the meadows, all the animals pray for his forgiveness to Allah. Even the fish, whales, and all living creatures in the oceans pray for his forgiveness. And they ask for forgiveness for the students. Even the whales in the oceans, the birds in the skies. And the wild animals in plains. This means that the fact that you are studying the knowledge of Ahl al-Bayt, peace be upon them, and the narrations from Holy Prophet, infallible imams, Lady Fatima Zahra, peace be upon them, and try to memorize and understand these words, and acquire these concepts, it is considered to be a high rank for you. Therefore, if a person wants to give some money to his parents, other than the obligatory alimony, if they are poor and he has enough money, he is obliged to give alimony to his parents, but if the parents are not poor or in, on a happy occasion and you want to send a gift, if you send it to your parents, it is highly rewarded, but if you send it to a scholar or student, it will reward it more. There is also true about close relatives, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles or cousins. This is also rewarded by Allah very well, but still if, if you pay that money to a scholar, its reward will be much greater. The same is true about paralyzed sick person, which is again highly rewarded, but in comparison to students, it is less rewarded. You are now students and thus you are walking in the path of science. You should all try to have knowledge and piety simultaneously as to be considered among the scholars that Allah values so much. Otherwise, none of these bounties will affiliate to you. The condition for a scholar to be valued so much by Allah is piety. If you try to be pious, you will acquire this high rank if your neighbor intends to give a gift to you, he will be rewarded more rather than his parents, close relatives, or some sick people. If someone constructs a hospital, 
or he constructs a university or a school, the latter is rewarded more. Or if he builds an orphanage, of course not in cases in which it is obligatory to build an orphanage, since the society needs to have facilitative organizations to or if he publishes books about knowledge of Ahlul Bayt then later is rewarded more therefore anything that is devoted to or spent for science based on this narration from Holy Prophet will be rewarded 100,000 times more. Helping the poor, the patients, close relatives, or parents are in lower levels. You have this rank and a status now. However, the necessary condition here is piety. As Holy Quran has also pointed this out in this verse, Allah only accepts from those who guard against evil. This means not only knowledge without piety is not rewarded, but also it is harmful. Imam Sajjad has said the following, it adds nothing to its owner but distance from Allah. You have all come here from far away countries and you have taken a lot of troubles both in your countries and here. Now you are studying and learning here. You should all try to be pious and also try to win over each other in studying and learning. It means when you and your friend are studying together, try to compete with each other and study more than the other. If your friends spend eight hours for studying, you spend eight hours and a half for studying. Just the same way your friend should add an hour to his studying. Try to raise each other in acquiring knowledge as much as you can. For this is what Holy Quran has ordered you to do. You must not let your friend to win over your studying and learning. You must try to win the race in learning. And your friend must try to win the race too. That is like a horse race or anything else. In which they consume all their power to get head a star. The Holy Quran has said the same about racing in goodness and virtues. If your friend takes Fridays off, you continue studying on Fridays too, as learning has no off time. If it covers four units, you must try to cover five units, and of course in a better quality. If your friends spend 20 minutes for studying per unit, you must spend 25 minutes because you can learn deeper. You also can memorize or jot down notes to learn better. This was about the importance of learning. But regarding the transmission of the knowledge, there are numerous verses in Holy Quran and numerous narrations in the references. One of his such instances is the following narration, which is very famous one. And indeed, if Allah guides a man, it is better for him than everything sun ever shines on. And yet another narration, the following has been transmitted, if he doles it in the way of Allah, how much gold is there in this world? 
چقدر نقره استخراج میشه How much gold and silver is extracted from the mines in the world How much oil and gas are extracted every day چقدر فیروزه و عقیق How many pieces of valuable stones اگه اینا همش such as turquoise and a gate are being extracted if all the oil in Africa and Middle East and the precious stones or the gold mines was yours and you would do good things with them how much would Allah reward you the reward would definitely have been immense and incalculable However, if you guide someone to the right path, then this will be more precious to Allah and thus rewarded more by Him. Not all the things that the sun shines at. And you know that the sun shines at many things. One of which is the earth and its resources. If he guides one to the right path, it's better than spending in charity what sun shines at. Now you can get a clear picture of how valuable it is. How is this possible? You need to acquire knowledge and then transmit this knowledge to others. This is very high rank. Anyone who believes in this, then he will stop doing anything else and will devote all his life to learning and transmitting this knowledge. And guiding other people to the right path. If you want to guide others, first you must be very knowledgeable. And the more knowledgeable you become, the less time you will need in guiding other people. Sometimes a short story or a small but interesting reasoning will persuade someone to accept guidance. It is very clear that if one explains and interpret one verse in Quran very well, he can sometimes guide a person with that single verse. I myself had a debate once with one of the scholars who was against the teachings of Ahlul Bayt in Karbala. We talked for over four hours. But I could not change his mind. In the end, I said something that I could finally change his mind and guide him. As you see, sometimes one small point can guide a person. Now what I told that man is as follows. This man was an educated scholar and he was knowledgeable. Whatever I said to him, he rejected and reasoned about. In the end, I couldn't convince him and we were about to leave each other. I told him not that we we're going to leave. He lived in another city and he was one of the well-known scholars of that city. We might not see each other again, I said. And this was true since. And I did not see him again until he died. I just told him, I just want to tell you one thing in the end and then I will leave. I'm sitting here while I'm a follower of the Ahlul Bayt. And I'm utterly sure that I will go to paradise in hereafter. However, you are not sure about that. Try to acquire this certitude. He said, no one can be sure of that. How do you say that? I said, my reason is the famous and valid narration by the Prophet of Allah, peace be upon him. 
in which he said, the Ahlul Bayt are like Noah's Ark. Whoever gets on will be saved, and whoever fails to do so will founder. He was familiar with the narration and said, yes, this is successively transmitted narration. Since he was knowledgeable, the scholar, and had studied a lot, then I went on, I have followed and will follow the Ahlul Bayt in this world in the basic principles of faith, ethics, religious practices, and religious decrees. Then on Judgment Day, two things can happen. Either Ahlul Bayt will go to paradise, with whom I also enter the paradise, since I've been with them my whole life in the world, or they will, Allah forbid, not to go to paradise. And as you know, this is an impossible thing to happen. However, assuming the impossible is not impossible, and also Allah used such impossible assumptions in Quran by using the word if, such as in the verse, if the beneficent Allah had a son, Allah has no son at all, uh, or the verse, and if he had fabricated against the sum of the verses, this would never happen that the Prophet fabricates against Allah, this is okay, and it is just an if. A conditional argument is correct, though the possibility is... So I told him, if Ahlul Bayt had not been good people, and they were not sent to paradise, and Allah forbid they would be sent to hell. If this happens, I will not go to hell with them. Because I will say to Allah, O Allah, your Prophet had ordered me to follow his descendants. And as I did, as he ordered me. Therefore, since Allah is just, he will never punish a person who made a mistake unknowingly. He will not send me to the hell. Therefore, no matter what happens on the judgment day, I will go to paradise. Whether Ahlul Bayt are good and go to paradise, or they, Allah forbid, go to hell. This is because if they go to paradise, then I will also go to paradise. And if they don't, then I have an excuse in following them. Because the Prophet of Allah ordered us so in successive narrations, which is there is no doubt. Then I told him, however, in your case, if you are the follower of Abu Hanifa, Shafi, or a follower of Malik, or Ahmad ibn Hanbal, then if these people go to paradise on the judgment day, then you will also. However, if they go to hell, then you will go to hell with them. Since you have no successively transmitted narration by the Prophet in which he said you have to adhere to one of these four people. Thus you won't have an excuse before Allah why you follow these people. Since he was a knowledgeable man, he had an answer for that. So you have to be very knowledgeable to answer back. He said, I'm the follower of neither of these four people nor the follower of Abu Hanifa or Shafi or a follower of Malik or Ahmad ibn Hanbal I'm a follower of my own judgment whenever my judgment is in line with the teachings of Abu Hanifa I will practice his teachings and whenever it is against it I will leave his teaching the same is true about Shafi, Malik and Ahmad ibn Hanbal's teachings I will access their teachings and judge which one is correct then I will act upon my own judgment. Then he brought an example. 
It said, for instance, when someone has performed minor ablutions, then suddenly he cuts himself and blood gushes out. Some of the sects believe that if blood gushes out more than one centimeter, then he has to perform the ablutions again. Some believers said that if it is twice as much, then he has to redo the minor ablution. However, since based on my judgment, such a thing is not true. I have always acted based on my judgment. Sometimes I've cut myself and blood has covered my hands, but I did not redo my minor ablutions. Thus, I follow my own judgment and issues. I, however, answered, that's all right. But the principle I said is still applies to you. That is, if one judgment day it is proven that your judgment of the religious teachings had not had been correct, then you will go to paradise. Then if it is proven that they had been wrong, then you will still be sent to hell, as there is no successfully transmitted narration by the Prophet in which he ordered you to follow your own judgment and called it like Noah's Ark. When I told him that, he spoke no more. After a while he left and went back to his town, I heard later from his son that he said his prayers the way taught by Shiite Imams from then on. Do you know what is needed for this type of reasoning? The only thing that is needed is enough knowledge. Therefore, always try to learn one more thing and or study one more issue. Then you will have more power. In guiding others and in shorter time. I would like to make two recommendations here. One for the ladies and the other for the gentlemen. For the ladies, I recommend you all to read and memorize the Fadakiya sermon by Fatima Zahra, peace be upon her. Do this if it takes a month or even three months. Those who have children or they have a problem and they do not have the time, they can memorize one sentence every day. And repeat the sentences you memorized the days before. Do this every day until you memorize it all. Then after sometimes when you understood and thought about the sermon, then write reviews on it and publish your reviews in your own language in your countries for other people. I assure you that this will lead you to the guidance of many people. This is speech by Fatima Zahra, peace be upon her, is an except of Islam. In it, she presented a summary of the basic principles, branches of the religion, ethics and the practices of the religion of Islam. And you can start from tonight. This was my recommendation for ladies. As for my recommendation for gentlemen here, Imam Sadat has a letter called a letter from Imam Sadat to Shiites. This letter exists in the book Baharan War. Find it and make a copy of it for each other and memorize it. This letter is a little longer than for the Kiya sermon. You gentlemen can memorize it one sentence a day. 
روزی یک خطش روزی دو خط روزی پنج خط هر until you memorize it all این رساله را حفظ کنید این هم اثاره اسلامی this letter is also an excerpt of Islam in another way و بعد در آینده در then when you go back to your countries in Africa هر کشوری که هستید به زبانهای مختلف translate it into your own languages and publish it تاب کنید منتشر کنید هر وقت تو نوستید خورده then you will see it that it will lead to the guidance of thousands perhaps millions of people a letter from Imam Sadiq and peace be upon him to Shiite I hope that for the sake of today which is such a great and blessed day Allah would bestow upon us all the prosperity of this world and hereafter May Allah bless Muhammad and his pure descendants